Hi, this is Junaid, neurocritical care stroke and epilepsy specialist. Today, we're going to talk about migraine prevention, lifestyle considerations, and migraine management. So remember, we talked about the first part, and if you haven't seen that video, please make sure you do so. We talked about medication management, consistency and routine, measure to improve, anticipate and abort, and then finally recognizing red flags. In this particular talk, we're gonna talk about number one, sleep hygiene, number two is hydration, number three, exercise, and number four would be de-stress. So I'm gonna just gonna say this. I cannot treat your headache if you're not having good enough sleep. Believe it or not, I have treated severe migraine with a CPAP machine. It is extremely, extremely important that you take care of your sleep. If you're not going to be able to do so, then we cannot treat your headaches, period. It's that simple. That's the key thing that you have to understand. Sleep is so extremely important. Now, everyone has a different sleep cycle. Everyone has a different sleep schedule. Some are nocturnal, some are not. It is your own habits and that will dictate how you're going to improve your sleep per se and again sleep tracking is becoming extremely important you can use your apple watch you can use any other devices that to track your sleep for better sleep all night there are a few things that are available as far as sleep is concerned number one is make it a priority that sleep is actually a priority in your life because work is a priority family is a priority but sleep is also a priority because if you're not going to pay attention to sleep then you're the rest of your life is going to fully suffer so make sure it is a priority number two do not eat food up to three hours before going to sleep avoid benzodiazepine they actually worsen the sleep cycles and end up making the sleep overall quality decreased there are a few major trips and tricks you can search online on google and you can find those tips and tricks for me i would just tell you that that the bedroom is only for sleep and sex only and nothing else happens in there so make sure that you have sort of a sanctuary in which you go to sleep if you're going to make sure that this is where your sanctuary to sleep is you're going to fall asleep better you're going to have an increased quality of sleep Take a book or a Kindle. Do not take your phone or TV because that significantly decreases the light. It has shown in multiple studies that that can decrease the overall quality of sleep as well. So Kindle and book is something that you can take to your bed, but nothing else. If you do need a phone, there's clearly now night mode onto it. Make sure you switch it on, especially on an iPhone or all the Android phones now actually have this mode in which you changes the light profile that can help you improve the overall quality of sleep. I mean, some people do need the phone. I mean, I do need it because I'm I mean, I'm on call all night, so if I'm not going to take the phone, what can I do about it? So at the end of the day, make sure that you have these good sleep hygiene habits consistently. Consistently sleep on time, wake up on time. There is a proper schedule, and that schedule needs to be honed in, and everyone knows that you have a schedule, period, so nobody disturbs you during those times. Some people, it's hard. I mean, clearly, I mean, there are physicians who are on call, and they also suffer from migraine. That's very, very hard. Some people have shifts that are switching from day shift to night shift again this becomes a big problem and believe it or not i tell them that you know you really need to have a plan as far as anticipate and abort as we talked about in those particular personnel who cannot have a proper sleep hygiene schedule but again sleep is extremely important as i said before believe it or not if you have any doubt that you might have sleep apnea go get it tested because cpap may be the only intervention you need for your headache believe it or not as a matter of fact, one of the signs of sleep apnea is waking up with a headache. And people routinely misconstrued that for migraine. So make sure that you get that checked. If you have any doubt, you probably have sleep migraine. Again, get sleep tracking. It's extremely important to measure to improve. And if you can at least do it on intermittent basis, do that. But make sure you have some tracking at all done in all these processes. Number two, hydrate. Oh my God. I mean, hydrate 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 and you have to be extremely careful that you have complete hydration body reacts very differently when it's dehydrated it falls into physiological stress you want to avoid stress and if you're going to have any signs of dehydration then your body is going to feel stressed and any stress any sort of stress right i mean can make things worse for any chronic disease especially for migraine so make sure that you hydrate and again track now, this is only one line I'm going to say about it. Like People who do not find time to exercise will have to find time for illness. It is so true. 
And believe it or not, there's so many benefits. I mean, it, it increases your happiness. It increases your stamina. Actually, you perform better in bed. I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. So it's extremely important that you continue to use exercise as a motivator, as a way to actually have a break from your cycle and just do it for once a day. As a matter of fact, the way I started it was very simple. I took five minute walk. That's it. Five minute walk, one block daily at the same time everyone knew Janet is going to just go out and take a walk and that was after dinner because it helped me with my digestion and all that and eventually it became such a good habit that i now do 14 minutes of brisk walk every day so start slow start small but do it on a consistent basis as a habit okay now this is the hardest and the easiest to tell right de-stress very easy right good job doc <laughs> so I get it, right? I mean, de-stress is actually extremely hard. But again, if you are going to make a priority to not have stress in your life, that's hard. But what you can do is basically how you respond to it. And there are multiple ways of coping mechanisms as well. And there are multiple ways of actually avoiding it. And sometimes it's unavoidable. So avoiding it, I mean, if you have a crappy job and, you know, you might want to look for a new one market is getting better for job perspectives right now but let's say if you can't avoid it then you actually have to make sure that you mindfully understand that this should not affect your lifestyle you should ignore the other problems the office politics whatever it needs to be and other things are definitely important for me two things really helped Number one, that walking time, that exercise time was basically also my meditation time. I just de-stress over there and I clean my mind and walk and that is it. I purposefully do not think about it. So I basically combine two, the exercise and meditation. And the second thing is breathing technique. You take a deep breath, hold and move and then release. There's a whole book called Breathe and you will not believe how important to read that book is. And then I'll put it into my show notes on my blog, a link to that book. So make sure you read that book and improving your breathing technique can significantly de-stress your life. Again, anticipate. Look, there is just no way you cannot have flare-ups. You will eventually. That's a fact. If you're going to think, oh, I'm going to be amazing and I'm not going to have any flare-ups, that's not going to work. You need to anticipate it and have a plan to abort it. And therefore, it's extremely important that you always track, 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 measure, measure, measure. Again, I'm very grateful for your time to review this video with me. Make sure you go to the Academy website and follow me on different social media platforms. Thank you. If you save a life, it is as if you save the life of mankind. Please make sure you like, comment, share, and subscribe to my YouTube channel and my newsletter. If you want to get in touch with me, the best way is to go through Twitter or via LinkedIn. Also make sure you follow the Academy website for regular updates. Thank you so much.